Yeah, just to start the cloud recording, uh, let me start uh, what I'm going to call my backup recording. And what this is backup for is, uh, one, it's a backup of my face. Um, so I think I included a, a YouTube link to one of the announcements I sent out. Um, uh, so a lot of the, the sessions that are being recorded, I edit them in the future and uh, post it on YouTube publicly. And when I do that, I found that it's um, useful for video editing purposes to have my face always. And it hasn't been easy to consistently do that with a Zoom. Um, so this is my uh, backup recording for that. And um, I think last semester, I found the audio helpful. And um, I've done different things with audio in the past. In the past semesters, I've used for used what's called original sound for musicians. But I guess that uses a lot of bandwidth. So this semester, I'm just trying to not use that original sound for musicians. But this um, OBS will be recording uh, what is an original sound. So I'll be using that. So started the back recording. Let me put uh, my what's going to become my usual welcome message in the chat, and we'll get started. Welcome, thank you so much for joining in this uh, orientation session. If you have any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask, or put your question into the chat window. Although maybe not right now, <laughs> because I'm going to explain some of my setup. So I have a two screen setup. I have a main screen that hopefully you are seeing shared right now. And on the second screen that's physically over here is where I keep all the other windows that I need for managing this Zoom session. One of them is this chat window. Uh, this gets used, can be used in a few different ways. Um, I, I guess one main way I imagine the people would use it for is, so in this uh, um, online orientation session and in the future virtual class sessions, you are going to see that um, I kind of talk nonstop. <laughs> and, and there is a reason for that. And, you know, when you see me in person, you will see that I know how to, you know, ask a question, close my mouth, and just be silent for a very long time until people feel uncomfortable and have to start answering questions. That's in fact one of the first two things that they teach you when they teach you how to teach. Um, but I think in this online setting, it doesn't quite work that way. Uh, and uh, so this is not a pressure for anyone to turn their video on, but you can see that I'm the only one with the video on. And I think that's uh, some of the reasons um, for which uh, if uh, this session just went silent, quiet, no one else feels uncomfortable. So, um, so I've decided to go with a different convention, which is the convention common in broadcasting world, uh, radio. The TV is a little bit too highly pro produced, but radio especially, stations actually get fined if they have a lot of dead time, time when um, people are silent. <laughs> um, so we don't get fined, but uh, I felt like the, there wasn't, it wasn't really possible to effectively use the silence, so I've decided to minimize it. Now, uh, because I'm talking nonstop, uh, that might discourage some people from interrupting, although I've said just before starting the recording that you are welcome to. People who are here in real time, really the reason to be here in real time to direct the flow of the session, um, interrupt me if I said something that's confusing, or um, ask me if there are any questions. So you should always feel free to unmute yourself and ask. Now, if uh, somehow you feel uncomfortable doing that, because um, there aren't going to be any pauses, you will necessarily be interrupting. Um, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can put your question into the chat window. Um, the chat is never interrupting, but I can still see it in the second screen and respond to it when it feels like the right uh, time. And uh, you can use chat in one other way. So I won't click it. But in this two thing, if you click it, you will see that you can send the chat to individual people. So don't do it right now. But uh, if you send it, pick it, uh, send the recipient, set the recipient to me, then you can send me a private chat message. Messages that are sent publicly like this, it'll get captured on the Zoom recording. You will see it in the recording. But any messages that are sent privately, it won't get captured in the recording. And most of the time, this lives in the second window. And I'm really careful about moving it into the, the shared uh, first screen. So, so that's the way um, I encourage people to use the chat. 
And um, as you will hear me say a few more times, the uh, real reason to be at these sessions, especially um, when most of the session is recorded, is to be able to direct the flow of the meeting. Because um, the recorded, um, rec the recording, it's good for accessing the session in an asynchronous way, but you know it's a recording; it won't respond to <laughs> whatever you do. So, um, so with that. Um, yeah, I think that's enough of the uh, description of my setup. I'll have a much briefer version of that at the next virtual class session, and then uh, um, um, and for now move on from here. So, uh, all for all these online sessions, uh, you will see an announcement like this. And really, the purpose of a, a set agenda like this is so that I remember to do everything that I meant to do. So let me just uh, work my way down this agenda. I'm probably actually going to do this uh, at the end, but talk about these two briefly before doing the course demo, which I'm hoping to spend the majority of this time in. So uh, let me start with the introduction. So we already did a kind of an intro among the group who are here in real time. I'll just do my own for the recording. Um, and uh, move on. So, hi, my name is Andrew Park. I'm your inst uh, Physics 4A instructor this semester. Um, I, this uh, is the class I've taught the most um, and most often at uh, College of Alameda. I My first time teaching Physics 4A here was 10 years ago in fall 2014. And um, I, I've had the gaps here and there, so it's not like I haven't taught this 20 times, <laughs> but it's the class that I've uh, taught the most. I'll do more extensive intro as a part of the course demo. There's a um, the thing that I have to do as a test student, this, so I'll do a longer intro then. Uh, but you got my name <laughs> and, um, and how long I've been teaching here. Um, and uh, so by what I mean by a few beginning of semester notes, it's the first announcement I've sent. And this is something that you do have to kind of watch out for. The way the course setting is set up here, this recent announcement, it will only show you the really the most recent announcement. So if there are two announcements, it will show the single most recent announcement. So when you see something like this, um, uh, you should check to see if there are other announcements you haven't seen. So I've made one other announcement earlier, actually before the start of the semester. Uh, this is the message I send out every semester, actually to all my classes, because all my classes have a, a heavy online component. So uh, what it comes down to is um, in an online class, well, this is a hybrid class, but even so the greater portion of the class is online. And even though the, the one time per week that we meet in person in lab is useful, helpful, important, um, you will, as you go through the class, you will see, you will feel the lack of that in-person lecture. That lack of in-person lecture is really something that we have to make up for, that you have to be conscious of. Um, so, you know, in a 100% uh, in-person class, if you are missing a week of class, that would be three separate meetings. Like you wouldn't feel it, I wouldn't notice it. Uh, but in this class, if you miss the lab once, that is missing one week. And I have had a student who have actually missed, you know, three weeks of class. And uh, when I see them, it doesn't look like they've felt it that way because from their perspective, they only missed the three class sessions instead of thinking it in terms of weeks. So I do think uh, a lot of what I do for my 100 person online class still applies. So um, the number one important thing is really keeping the lines of communication open. I need to be able to reach you. And I'm going to be uh, start reaching out to people who haven't done anything on the Canvas shell. And eventually, I'll be calling some people who haven't done anything on Canvas and don't show up on Thursday. That's the last thing I do before I have to drop people. Um, and uh, I, you know, if you want to make things easy for me, please make sure that uh, I can reach you by your Paralta email. And I think uh, our Campus Solutions lets you set your preferred email that's not Paralta, then great, that might work fine. Um, and uh, if uh, somehow you haven't done that, or you find that you can, you have access to 
your Peralta email that you are not checking regularly, then uh, please make sure you forward it. Uh, there are some instructions for forwarding your email that's at this link. Um, you can follow that. It's relatively easy. You just log in, and in the settings, you, um, um, you go for uh, help. I usually click on the gear icon. Either it's fine, you know, check forwarding and um, uh, forward it to an email address that you regularly check. If you're somehow using either using Peralta email for as your main email, or you are um, you you have set your uh, preferred email address so that um, like the announcements that I sent by email that went to your other email address, then great, I think we are all set up. But if it's going to your Peralta email and you haven't been checking your Peralta email regularly, then please uh, forward this so that um, I can reach you by email um, easily. And because email will be my first uh, backup method to contact you with. Um, I actually, the so for course related things, the main way I prefer to contact you by is the Canvas uh, uh, conversations tool or Canvas inbox. And um, that's what the second bullet item is for. So when I use Canvas Inbox, so I'm using it as a kind of organizational scheme. You know, you use your email for other things. I also use my email for other things. And for me to make sure that I don't miss course-related communication, Canvas is really a great way for way to uh, organize it so that um, so that whenever there's a message from students that I haven't re addressed yet that still is in my Canvas inbox and I can look through it and um, make sure it's addressed before I archive it. And for this to work like email in terms of you receiving notifications, you have to make sure that you have the correct uh, course notification setup. Now, you can really customize your notification setting, which is great. You can access it through either this link or you can go through your profile picture and then notifications link there. Um, and it's really customizable. These days, I think they even customize you based on courses. What does it say? Oh. I don't have anything for 22 for spring. Oh, there it is. Uh, you can set it on a per course basis. Uh, for me, that's all really complicated. I just want to set it per account. That's how I have it set up. And you will see here what my preferences for most of these are. I really like setting everything notify immediately. It's on the philosophy that if anything ever bothers me too much, I can always turn it down. And I, I but I don't think I've uh, like, I can count on one hand. I've had a group membership update. <laughs> I was doing a professional development. That's the one time when I was added to a group. So when it's a set as a notify immediately, it doesn't actually bother me because there aren't that many messages under this category. So most of these things are set up as notify immediately. You've you can see that I've turned down some. Like I used to have all submissions as notify immediately. Then I realized for every assignment, I'm going to get like 40 some. 40, uh, 40 notifications, so I turned it down to a daily summary. Um, and so, so that's my basis for recommending that you should really set everything as notify immediately. If anything starts to bother you, then you can turn them down. Now, having said that, you know, you're probably taking more than one class and um, I'm dealing with the notifications from just this class. Uh, you might find that you have too many notifications from all your classes. So if you are having to turn down many of these, I would still ask you to have as notify immediately at least uh, four things. Well, actually three things I point out and then one more thing. Um, one of them is what I was just talking about, the Canvas conversations tool. So when I send you a message, um, unless you set up conversation message as notify immediately, there will be some delay between when I send you the message and when you receive it. So I really would like you to set this setting as notify immediately. That makes you sure when I, uh, I can use Canvas message like email. Somehow if you don't have it set up that way and you never respond to Canvas conversations, then I will probably eventually reach out to you by email. But you know, please make things easier for me. Um, so that's one. Um, the other is announcement. So 
Uh, so if you have announcement to set as notify immediately, you should have received the announcement about this uh, orientation session and the, the welcome to week one announcement immediately this morning. But if you have this set up to anything else like a daily summary, then you probably haven't actually received that message yet because uh, Canvas sends those out like sometime between 6 to 7 p.m. So um, anything I send like today, you wouldn't get it until in the evening after the session has come and gone. Um, now, I try not to send you anything, announce anything where you have to respond to or act within 24 hours. So I'll try to minimize any harm being caused by uh, other uh, slower notification settings. But, you know, why not set it as notify immediately? Um, and the uh, and, uh, third thing that I would uh, ask you to send as notify immediately is this one. It's a submission comment. It's a, again, matter of organizing communication. Uh, when I'm grading your work, I like to leave uh, uh, my feedback as a comment on the submission. It helps organize, um, you know, uh, what feedback is where. And if I try to figure out what have I said to this person about um, their work, then it, it's kind of submission comment is really easy way to organize it. And it took me a while, maybe about a semester of using it until I figured out not everyone's setting here was a set as either notify immediately or some sort of a notification. There are people who are never receiving the, some, uh, the feedback that I uh, leave as a submission comment. And uh, sometimes there are certain things where um, I will change my future grading, uh, assuming you have seen the submission comment. So please, uh, set this as notify immediately that's what I would recommend but at a minimum maybe a daily summary so that you get some um, sort of a feedback that that I may leave on your submitted assignments so those are the three things that I mentioned in the um, the you know important a uh, couple important notes the one uh, fourth thing that I would ask you to set as some sort of notification ideally notify immediately is under discussions new topic. Um, setting this as uh, some level of notification import is important in two ways. One, um, so these recordings, when I post it, I'm going to post it as a discussion. And for the first week or so, I will uh, post additional announcements telling you this recording has been posted, but I'm going to stop after the first week. So unless uh, you are uh, regularly receiving new topic uh, notifications, um, you won't be getting notifications when these recordings are posted. So that's one reason. And one of the, re well, um, two, two reasons I uh, organize things that way is one that I found that that's a, a better way to organize it than cluttering up the announcements page with a, a recording notification, one. To, uh, the way the discussions are set up in this class, anybody can post a new topic. And uh, that really works if uh, everyone receives notification. So uh, f to um, streamline the class-wide communication from your classmates, uh, I recommend that you set new topic as a notify immediately. And I'm really glad that Canvas uh, instructor separated out replies from new topic, because I do realize that um, if you're taking other online classes and some instructors have a really high level of engagement requirements, I can imagine new reply notification getting annoying. And you know, if that happens, you can turn this down, you know, turn it down to daily, weekly summary, or even turn it off. That doesn't matter for what I do, <laughs> which is uh, the new topic. So, um, so that's my recommendation that you set new topic notification as notify immediately so that one, you get notification of any new recording that's posted and two, you get, um, you get notification of the topics that your classmates uh, may post. So, so those are the a couple things I wanted to go over. You know, I posted this in written form, and since um, we have here in real time in a video recorded video format, I thought I'd just uh, go through it so that you can see where you access these things. So, um, so that's it for that item. Uh, let me quickly go through the other two agenda items here so that I don't forget them, and I'll use the remainder of the time for a course demo. So. Um, this, I um, realized just uh, uh, 30 minutes ago that uh, I forgot to unpublish the quiz 
but uh, I think uh, some people were able to access it already, um, probably using the method that I will point out. Um, so what I will say is, uh, please do respond to this survey so that I can get a sense of, uh, um, uh, well, you know, when would it be the best time to schedule virtual class session this semester? Um, and um, yeah, so so I'll um, and I'll talk about how to access this uh, when I'm doing the course demo. Uh, what it comes down to is there is a way for you to access it right now, um, but um, that method I don't really like people using it. So I'll be posting a separate announcement where you will see a link to this as well. And I guess you can probably use that link also, but you know, I don't. I shouldn't require it to URL hack. So, uh, so that's the about the. Oh, I guess uh, I meant to get feedback from people here in real time. You know, let me do that at the end of the recorded portion of the session. Um, so, I, I guess what I want you to think about is uh, what time you would be able to attend if you want you to attend, and if there's a particular time people tell me works particularly well for them, uh, that those would be the first times I would consider. Sometimes, you know, when I look at the survey results, it um, looks kind of flat, like no particular time looks good for everyone. So, um, <laughs> so I can just look at what um, then you know. In those cases, oftentimes I go by what time works for me, and I'm also happy to go by what time works for people who uh, took the time out of your day to show up here today. So, so I'll, uh, if I somehow forget to do that, do please remind me after I stop the recording. Um, or, you know, put, put it, uh, if you have to leave before then, put something in the chat, uh, um, like say, uh, these times work well. And if you don't want pe other people seeing it, send it to me as a private message. Uh, and finally, I want you to make sure I remind the people about Thursday's in-person lab session. Uh, there's a typo there. Let me just fix that. Uh, Thursday's in-person lab session. Um, um, uh, yes, we do meet this uh, first uh, week because we have so few in-person meetings. So even though a lot of um, a lot of uh, lab sections on in the first week don't meet. I've, I've never done that. We always meet even the first week. And um, I think I tried to put it in a couple places so that people will know where to show up. We are in a Peralta Science Annex, um, which is at um, A60 Atlantic Avenue. And that is our street address. We are not on the main campus. We are a couple blocks from the main campus. So please uh, put this in your mapping software and you will see there's plenty of parking right outside the building. Um, and yeah, and I think I also put it in, um, I probably put it in one of the module pages about the in-person lab. Uh, that was either, um, did I put it under weekly lab modules? Possibly, um, I don't know. Sometimes I forget where I put things. Um, no, I didn't put it here. Um, I, I do <laughs> seem to remember there's one other place where I put it, but I can't remember it. So let me just not waste your time with it for the time being. So we have a, a in-person lab meeting this Thursday. And um, I, for people who are especially on wait list, I've uh, asked people to come to that uh, in-person Thursday lab meeting, uh, mainly so that I can see how well everyone fits. So um, really the, the proper class size for the classroom we have is 36 people. That's how many stations there are. But uh, the room can, we regularly have uh, 40 chairs out there. That's the cap that's in the system. And uh, if we really push it for a few days, for, for a few weeks, we can have 44 people uh, under the assumption that some people will drop. So um, so we'll see who's there on Thursday. And if uh, in the space it looks like we can fit people who are there, then I'll pass out uh, permission numbers then. And for people who are in class, if you're not there Thursday, then I don't know why you aren't there, I might drop you. So um, please, uh, if you can at all, please make sure you are there. And somehow if you can't, make sure to make arrangements so that you don't get dropped. So with that, I'm going to use the remainder of the time to do a bit of a course demo. Uh, so I'm going to, I've deliberately not done anything as test student so that I can do this demo. There are certain things in the course that are uh, set up in a particular way that in the past have confused the people. And I just want to make sure I um, demonstrate all that. So let me go into student view. 
So this is the test of student view. This is as closely as possible the view that you will see when you access this uh, Canvas site. And I guess one of the first things I will say is uh, if we are using the mobile Canvas app, um, I mean, I don't have any way to prevent you from using it. So I guess if you want to use it, you'll be using it. But my main word of caution is um, mobile Canvas app, it's a buggy. Uh, a few years ago, it would never show this home page. And I think now it does. Then even then, there are certain features that don't work. And whenever you see something weird and you're on mobile Canvas app, my first number one recommendation is try loading that page on a web browser. You can use the mobile web browser. Um, it's just that on a, how it looks on the web browser is different often from how you see it on the mobile Canvas app. And the view that I see is the how it looks on a web browser. And speaking of view that I see, um, this thing on the side, this is uh, one of the things that I don't see unless I um, remember to come into test to student view and deliberately look at this. This to-do list, what you see is completely different from what I see. Because for me, as an instructor, they show me um, what an instructor should do. They, they, and they show you what the student should do. And you, I can understand the logic. But here's the kicker, the reason I'm cautioning you against this sidebar, which is that I haven't, oftentimes I have no idea what you are seeing here. So uh, whatever you are seeing here, um, it's not something I took into account when I designed the course. So a lot of the things on this sidebar will do things that confuse you. And I won't know that there were things that confuse you until it happens often enough that people complain. <laughs> so here's one example. So in this course, we use uh, linear module requirements. So the module requirements that uh, force you to linearly progress through the class. Now, in this uh, to-do sidebar, it'll give you links to things that are supposedly for you to do. So you see this link, you know, graded discussion, introduce yourself, and you think, oh, I should do that. Yeah, sure, you should do that. And you click on it. And then when you do that, this is all you see. And this confuses people, uh, well, maybe more so in my physics 10 than physics 4a, because it does have the error message. So if you slow down and read it, then you can see, oh, it hasn't been unlocked yet. And don't stop there because often people will tell me, oh, professor, can you please unlock uh, this thing because it hasn't been unlocked. It, it, this is a little bit ambiguous. It's not telling you it hasn't been unlocked yet by whom? Your instructor? you yourself and my contention is i have not locked anything i don't use any date based uh, locking of items in this class so if anything has uh, ever um, shows up as not been unlocked it means it hasn't been unlocked because of uh, incomplete uh, canvas module requirements so it hasn't been unlocked yet by you and the way you would unlock it is by completing these compilation prerequisites so, you know, if you slow down and read the messages, then you can figure it out. But, um, but you know, this does cause confusion. And if I could simply disable this to-do bar, then I would. But I haven't figured out how to disable it, so that's why it's there. I really would like you to ignore it entirely. And that's really one of the reasons why, even though you can access the office hour survey through this link, it's in your to-do list, even though it's not linked from anywhere else, it is there. So you can access it and take the survey right now. Uh, even though you can do that, I'm not gonna tell you to do that. I'll just uh, post another announcement with this link so that I can tell people to um, go to this link instead of tell people to use something that otherwise I tell, tell you not to. Uh, there's a one way in which this might be useful, which is tracking the announcement. Because um, this thing I have here, it shows the most recent announcements only. But here, anything with this icon is an announcement. So you can get to the very first announcement that is in, in your to-do bar. And read it, you know, after reading it, go back and uh, get rid of it. Read the next one. Um, and then go back and after you've read it and make sure you knew what it was, then let me refresh properly, um, then get rid of it. So, so if you are using the to-do bar for tracking announcements you have seen, great. I don't see any issues with that. Um, but other than that, like this to-do bar will confuse you more than help you, I think. So yeah, so that's a, one of the, and again, the reason this is, I really don't 
uh, would like you to ignore it is because whatever you see on your to-do bar is something that I'm not saying. So uh, the, when I designed the course, this was just uh, not even an afterthought. Uh, I only figured out re relatively recently that this is an issue. So, so with that, uh, let me go through the course in the way I think you should. You know, when you land on this homepage, you should read through this beautiful homepage. It took some time to design, and I hope I updated everything. I did. <laughs> so, you know, here's the homepage. It says, please click on start here. Okay, let's click on start here and get started. This will always take you to this page. This is the very first page in the Canvas modules. Some of this you might have seen in the past. Um, and uh, for those of you who try to skip pages, um, then, you know, there's the explanation here. Let me click next. So um, this is how the course is meant to be viewed through, you know, one page at a time. Now, you can um, work through the, these pages in a way that I totally don't recommend, but which is what I'm doing right now. Oh, I think this is where I put in. No, I still haven't said that that's the actual address. Oh, I think I put it in the announcements. But anyways, so, you know, you can totally do what you see me do that I don't think you should, <laughs> which is that, uh, you know, you can just uh, go through these pages um, without reading them through. I haven't put in the requirements that would force you to read it, except in a very few places. For most of the pages, you can totally do what I and doing and my recommendation is please don't and in places where um, you, there are places where you will eventually get stuck and here is one such place because the item immediately previous to this discussion wasn't um, those um, module requirements which allowed me to simply click next to through this had a module requirement that forced me to do something <laughs> so let me do that let me uh, do that demo um, and uh, let me get there by a little bit longer route. So I'm going to go to the home page, pretend that I landed on this page again. And, and if you click on start here, it'll be really annoying quickly because it only takes you to, to this page. It's not dynamic. It doesn't know where you are last. So uh, anytime except for the very first time you are going through the class, you probably want to click on modules instead of start here. The modules view is the view that I would recommend. This is how you see the course. It shows you everything. It shows you what items you have completed. Um, it shows you what items are coming up. Um, here, you know, these grayed out things, which I can click right now, and it'll take some effort to get to. You can see that they're coming up. So, you know, week one items, you can see that it has this many items, and there's something about starting week too early. <laughs> um, so, you can see all of that, and more importantly, it shows what the module requirements are. So, those pages that I could have simply click through, they had a view module requirements. And view is a really weak requirement. All it means is your web browser has loaded a page. Um, it, it, I don't know if you viewed it. You could have looked away while you're clicking. So <laughs> um, now there are certain items, and you know, for most of these pages, I just want to make sure that you know where they are. I don't need you to memorize the overview of physics for a assignment types. Uh, there are certain contents where I do need to make sure that you took some time to read it through. You didn't simply click next to through. This honor code pledge is one of them. And that's why this has a different requirement that forces you to slow down, uh, to follow the instructions on the page. So let me do that as test the student. Because in this first week, this is the one where a lot of people do it wrong. Well, sorry, not a lot of people. At least a few people each semester do it wrong. So let me just talk about some of the ways in which people do this wrong, and I will demonstrate how to do it right. So, um, you know, I have instructions, and um, the main purpose, main reason this is set up the way it is set up is because, you know, if I had a, like honor code quiz or syllabus quiz, like some of my colleagues do, 
which you know, ironically is easier to do if you are willing to violate the honor code. If I said in the honor code, you know, don't um, refer to any other resources, uh, but if it's quiz, it's actually easier for you to answer it while referring to other resources. So really the main thing I wanted was for people to have read through this, this text. That's the main thing I want. And if you don't remember everything, that's fine. You got the honor code page on the Canvas modules way up. You can go back and look at it. Uh, I just want to make sure that everyone, uh, no one has an excuse that, oh, I never saw it. I didn't realize that was against course rules. I just wanted no one to be able to say that. So um, the way I can do that is by making you type this. So the most common way people will do this wrong is people will just type their name and you know slow down, read the instructions. It says, please type below indented text in the answer box. It doesn't say type your name. So you should uh, type this thing. And the uh, second thing that I see people do wrong, which is, I guess, a smaller number, you know, it, it depends on the semester. Uh, there's always at least one person each semester. People will do this, copy, paste, and then change the name. Even though I've, um, like, I think I've said so many times up there, please do not copy and paste. Um, and <laughs> people will do that. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, I never require something that I don't have a mechanism to enforce. So and now I don't really want to demonstrate that on the recording, <laughs> but I will show you at Thursday's lab section how I know when someone has copied and pasted. So the proper way you should complete this is by well, exactly what the instruction says, type it. So let me do that as test a student. I, test a student, will make submissions that represent my own work, uh, share my, and I'm a pretty um, fast uh, typist, except when I'm distracting myself, <laughs> also except we are explicitly allowed, not engage in plagiarism, not use outside resources during open book, timed assessment, and not engage in any other activity. And you see me correcting typos. All this is uh, manually graded. So um, I correct typos because of OCD. Um, you can leave typos in. Don't You don't have to introduce any typos that don't naturally exist. This is all manually reviewed. And when I manually reviewed, one of the things I look for is, does this appear copied and pasted? And, um, and the reason I do that is, you know, I want to have a proof for myself that you typed it. Uh, because if you typed it, there's at least some minimal level of guarantee that this text is somehow made through a portion of your brain. You saw me multitask, and uh, I do realize, uh, um, especially good typists can type things mechanically while thinking about something else. But um, this is as much as I could um, uh, ensure that someone has read through a block of text. And this is the only assignment where I do that because it's that important. So make sure to do this correctly and properly. So let me answer here. And this is the mechanism that allows you to automatically proceed before I have manually graded the, the first item up there, which is worth the three points. And when I grade it, um, I, uh, I can actually draw out your entire score. So um, if someone uh, hasn't done this properly, I will draw out the whole thing that forces you back here, do this correctly. And uh, this is that important. So with this completed, now when I go to the next item, it'll show me the graded discussion properly. A lot of people have completed this already. I think this is the most number of people who've done it so far. <laughs> so I'll have to be careful um, to not show any names because I have to blur those out when I edit the video later. So I'll just, some names will pop up. There's some that I just can't avoid, but I'll just be careful to show names as little as possible so that there are so less blurring I have to do later. Um, so this is an intro um, um, discussion. Really the main purpose for this is for taking attendance. Uh, and now, you should come to Thursday's lab, that's another attendance, uh, but if someone's not there on Thursday and they haven't done this, then I really need to reach out to them to make sure that they know they are in Physics 4A this semester. So uh, let me reply and uh, let me actually do my proper intro here as, uh, you know, myself, not test a student. So uh, let me 
uh, start with my name. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Andrew Park, and I prefer to go by Andrew. Although, if you aren't comfortable with that, uh, Mr. Park will do. Um, and I'm your instructor for physics for a. Uh, whenever you see test student in these great discussions, it's me, your instructor, clearing module requirements for the test student. Um, I did figure out how to bypass the module requirements, but I, I might do participate in a few more of these as test student. Um, so I'm uh, teaching uh, teaching this class not taking it um, um, why am I teaching this class because uh, <laughs> I have to <laughs> uh, sorry I used the joke last semester I don't think it's all that funny um, um, I, and um, and I love uh, teaching physics uh, for a it's a uh, it was my first class at College of Alameda, first teaching it in fall 2014. Um, and I think it's the class that gets at the core of physics as the fundamental science. Uh, working things out from first principles, uh, no, learning how to do a lot with a lot, uh, very little. Um, in physics 4B and 4C, there's a lot of laws of physics we teach. So some of the more fundamental aspect of physics, you really only get to see it in physics 4A. Um, so, so that's the first two questions. Choose one or more of the following questions. To answer. Um, um, oh, I'll, I guess I'll answer this one um, or this one. Uh, let me answer this one. <laughs> uh, when I was in college, undergrad, uh, undergrad uh, I double majored in physics and ma uh, mathematics, pure mathematics, uh, which was a mistake. Uh, I uh, could have uh, found a lot more time for electricity is if I did uh, uh, applied mathematics, mathematics a double major. Um, and in graduate school, the focus of my research was in atomic, molecular, and optical AMO physics, um, which don't relate a lot to um, physics for a mechanics material, but <laughs> Uh, this uh, kind of um, starts to matter in physics 4C, uh, um, dealing with the quantum mechanics and special relativity. Um, uh, so, anything else you are curious about, please ask. Okay, so let me do that. I'm gonna submit, uh, try to show, yeah, so. Um, I'll be blurring this out later. So um, now your classmates will be able to see it in recording, but they already can see your post. So, um, so now that I have posted it here, I have unlocked uh, this module requirement and I should be able to access through the remainder of the, oh, I think that was the last of the, um, uh, last of the getting started the module. So posting in that yeah, discussion, I contributed, that was the completion of the getting started. And um, now I have a whole week's material to go through. So um, so you still work through that. Uh, so when you are done with the getting started, hopefully tonight or tomorrow, um, please do uh, look through the week one material. That's this week's lecture material. And now let me point out one thing that's not super obvious to people because of the way Canvas modules are organized. When you completed this getting started module, you have unlocked not just one, but two uh, modules. You unlocked a week one lecture module, and you unlocked uh, weeks one and two LAM module. So the way these module prerequisites are set up, they are set up on a parallel chain. 
none of the LAM modules will ever rely on uh, have a, as a prerequisite your lecture modules, and your lecture modules will never have a LAM module as a prerequisite. So um, it, this matters to people when people might fall behind in lecture, then please at least look ahead in the lab modules um, so that you can prepare for the upcoming lab. Starting with your second lab, there are pre-labs, and I do my best to, that people can attempt the pre-lab even if you are a little bit behind in lecture. So, um, so let me work a little bit through a week one lecture modules. Uh, so I have introduction. Let me, now, if you are doing the thing I was saying earlier that, um, you know, you see me do, but you shouldn't do, you will quickly see yourself uh, getting blocked. And um, that's because of this uh, mark as done module requirement. And uh, what it is, is uh, there are certain module pages that um, contain information, usually physics content, that I want to make sure. Sorry, let me just refresh this so that I can get rid of the sidebar. Um, get rid of the sidebar. Um, there are pages that contain physics content that I really want to make sure that you slow down, that you weren't just clicking next to through. You had the time to review the material and think to yourself, um, does all of this make sense? Are you done? And when you feel you are done, then you can click mark as done and then click next. Now, for the careful listener, you might have realized, oh, so instead of just the one click, it's two clicks. Yeah, instead of one click, it's two clicks. <laughs> um, but uh, so one of the things that are, I think, uh, helpful is that um, that um, mark as done, it's a toggle button. So you can um, mark it as done. Maybe you just want to kind of look through uh, what's coming up. OK, you can do that. I've set it up so that I'm not stopping you. But you can also go back and unmark it as undone. And when you do that, then uh, you will see that being tracked in modules. So somehow, uh, if you felt like you had to mark things that was done to get through, and then you know uncheck it so that you can actually keep track of your progress, hey, you can totally do that. That's one advantage of mark as done requirement because it's a toggle button. You can set it, you can unset it. It's uh, really a tool for you to track where you are, what you need to have completed, and all that stuff. So. Um, you know, in the past uh, orientation sessions, I've done this use of generative AI contribution. Um, I feel like uh, people probably already contributed. So I don't think, yeah, there's four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I think me as a test student, I don't think I need to. So let me do it this way. I'm going to see if uh, the thing that I think I figured out works. So um what I'm trying to do is uh, go to speed grader because uh, for a long time I thought it was impossible for me to um, even excuse test student from doing that, and I think it's possible. So if I actually, you know, in the grader book, literally excuse the test student, then me doing this will actually allow test student to, to skip that module requirement. Let's try it and see. Um, so I'm here, let me go back to modules. And if uh, me just doing what I did as an instructor, which I want to for any other student, uh, oh, come on, it didn't, but I got excused. How? Uh, uh, that's a bummer. Um, I mean, yeah, it's excused. Um, why am I not able to? All right, I, I guess I'll have to do it. I thought I figured this out uh, all right, I, I must I, I, I must be mistaken. <laughs> so I was mistaken about being mistaken. So, um, so um, well, I'm still going to just uh, um, uh, I'm just uh, clearing the module requirement for the test the student. Now, if anyone else uh, leaves a response like this, please look at the grading rubric here. Um, you know, there are these items. <laughs> so test the student will be getting zero for that response because um, it was not substantial. And I guess technically it was timely, but when it's a practically a blank response, then I don't think it being timely actually matters because might as well have not been timely. <laughs> I'll just have to blur those names later. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, it's, uh, so 
most of the things are set up in this uh, um, Canvas modules. Um, really, with this online class, the biggest uh, hardship is that it puts a lot of the responsibility on you to be up to date with the assignment, to actually read through the material. <laughs> um, and But I provide a lot of help. A lot, most uh, possibly all homework questions have some sort of homework help video that if you are stuck on, you can watch through and uh, get some help. And you know, if you still need help as you are working through the My Open Math assignment, I really do want to encourage people to use these links. There's a message instructor link which will send me a message. Uh, Hi, how do I do this? Um, you know, to me. Um, now, if I get a question like this, this is one of the questions that I've done. So if uh, someone asks me that, then I will be replying them saying, oh, look at this video and you can do it there. Um, which, you know, I, I guess, um, yeah. But um, you would get that help even more quickly if you went back to the homework help page and uh, found that found the video from here. All these videos, they use the chapter and the references and there's a video here where I explain how to use those textbook references. So, um, but you, you know, if you are stuck and somehow if you can immediately find those videos I've done, then message me and I will help you. Um, there may be some questions here and there I still haven't done. Uh, I do want people to use this feature. And you can also use this feature. Um, I've had a mixed uh, result. Uh, uh, so, when, when you do this, it posts to a My Open Math forum, which is different from your Canvas discussion. And um, there are some ways to access it. Like uh, once there's a post there, you will see an icon pop up, I think somewhere here. Uh, oh, wow. Um, huh. Yeah, I, I guess this probably doesn't pop up because that's my own um, thing. But I think when I look at it as instructor, then that um, that forum thing will pop. Yeah, it pops up. It tells me, oh, there's a message and there's a forum message. Um, you, you are welcome to use either. I do want more people to make use of this because really, uh, I, I think that's how people learn. Uh, when you get stuck on something, struggle for a bit, but don't get stuck to the point where you're discouraged ask questions, and uh, that's really what I'm here for. I'm here to help. So I think that's uh, all the time we have for going over the uh, demonstration, of course. Some of the other things that will come up uh, throughout the week, I will be posting other messages, and, and I hope to schedule a regular virtual class session where I can address any ongoing issues on an ongoing basis. So uh, let me stop the recording here, saying goodbye to people joining by recorded the video and make sure that I get some feedback from people who are here in real time in case um, people had any uh, preferred um, at times so that I will at least know to look at those first uh, in case the survey result doesn't give me any particular time as a good time. So uh, I'm stopping the recording here, saying goodbye to people joining by recorded the video and uh, let me get this feedback before everyone leaves. <laughs> Bye to people joining by recording the video. Recording stopped. Okay, let me stop my backup recording.